I get asked the question um, quite a bit, like, when do I throw braided lines over fluorocarbons, or why do I throw fluorocarbon over braid and and, and the the spectra lines? Um, you know, I, there's a there's a there's a things I figured out over the years. Uh, sniper is sniper sunline is a smooth, easy casting line, and they even have another one out now that's actually easier than the sniper. To me, sniper is is the ultimate fluorocarbon. Um, it's, it doesn't have a lot of stretch yet. It casts. It's smooth. It casts. It lays out really easy under the water. It's really smooth. It's nice. It's easy to fish with. I most of the time prefer shooter, which is a little bit more stiff, a little more coily, um, even a little bit harder to cast. Uh, the reason I like shooter is because it's very low stretch. It it seems to even sink a little faster, more dense, extremely strong. Um, extremely abrasion resistant but there are times when the shooter doesn't work for me and uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't want people out there listening to me and, and buying a shooter and not liking it and there's there's two situations um, winter time you know 40 degrees 45 degrees even and less uh, you're probably going to want to use sniper and the weird thing is a sniper acts more like shooter when it's really cold um, it's actually gets a little more stiffness to it uh, it seems to get a little more denser. Uh, just it, it feels like shooter. The shooter, though, uh, gets even more coily, more hard to work with, and you know, casting in really cold weather, it'll backlash on you a lot. Uh, it gets really wiry. Um, so I tend to switch to sniper in really cold conditions. The opposite effect is when the weather gets more than 100, 105. You know, I fish Lake Mead every year for the U.S. Open, and the average temperature during the day is 115 degrees, and we've had three or four days in a row of 125. Um, in those situations, I leave the shooter at home, and I just use sniper. Um, again, it's kind of the opposite effect. It starts getting really wiry, hard to cast, hard to manage. I know a lot of us out here, you know, we don't get much more than 90, 95, and I still use shooter in those conditions, but. If you're going to really extreme conditions, really hot, desert, you know, you might want to, or if it's Texas and it's 115 out, 110 out, you might want to stick to the sniper. Uh, spinning gear, uh, you know, if you use a big spinning reel, um, you know, again, I love the shooter, it's really low stretch. You know, if you use like a 3000 or a 4000 spinning reel, bigger spool diameter, shooter's great, uh, to about eight pound, um, you know, getting a 10, 12 pound, you're going to have a hard time. And that brings me to the braided lines. If I want to use a spinning, ta uh, spinning tackle, of course I use uh, my favorite line to use on spinning, gear, spinning tackle, finesse fishing, is a 7 pound sniper. I use a 6 pound a lot, and I even use a 5 pound on occasions. Um, uh, if I'm fishing, if I want to cast really long distances, or if I'm fishing really deep water, uh, the thing that we do now, I've done this for 20 years with a lot of baits, is as I use the braided lines with a fluorocarbon leader. Um, the leaders may vary, you know, some guys like six feet leaders, some guys like 12 feet leaders. Uh, you know, I use them only from a foot long, you know, on some jerk baits and stuff. I don't want a long fluorocarbon leader. I just want enough to keep the bait from tangling itself. Uh, and that's why I do that, you know, including taking the split rings off a lot of the reaction baits and tying the leader directly to the, the bait that you're using and tying, tying that to the braid. Uh, that just keeps, that's like, almost like a shock leader to keep your bait from swinging around and hanging itself is the reason I do that. Uh, in most situations I just throw straight to the braid. Uh, and that brings me to the, the Sunline's got a brand new uh, braid called SX1 that I'm working on with them for the last three years. Uh, very dense, tight, small diameter braid. It's going to be awesome and the, the color in it's going to stay longer. It's probably going to be the best braid out there I think. Um, I haven't had a chance to test it yet. I've actually got some here and I've been working with it and it's, it's pretty awesome. 10, 20, 30, and 40 pound. But uh, the braided lines, you know, you get low, you know, you can cast a lot further with the, with the heavy, heavy line. You know, if you're using like 10 pound, <clears throat> a 10 pound braid with a, a 10, 8 or 10 pound leader, uh, you're going to be able to throw that same thing you throw on 10 pound or 8, eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon twice as far. Uh, and when you do get bit, on a 100 to 120 foot cast, which is how far you can use, easily throw at certain baits. Uh, when you do get a bite, you have tons of control. Uh, the hook set's super easy. Um, a five-year-old can do it. This is why that kind of like, uh, when I take my kids fishing, I have a five and eight-year-old, 
Uh, they knew they used nothing but braid. My my five year old just turned five, hasn't fished that much, and he can throw a bait, you know, 60 feet. It's amazing on a on 10 pound braid. So in that case, it must be easier for us, which it is. So when I throw it, it's just like it's. You know, it's like fishing two pound with a strength of ten pound. So uh, uh, you get less bird's nest. You know, when the line, you know, if you use like heavier fluorocarbon, you try to use eight pound, you're catching and reeling it up a lot. You get a lot of backlash. The braid uh, will eliminate, you know, eighty percent of that. You don't get if you do get one, it can be pretty severe, but it happens to everybody. But it doesn't get like it does with fluorocarbon. It can be get a lot of twist, and the line bounces off. It, it, it you can fish all day without uh, worrying about twist. Uh, no stretch, and again, you have a lot more control, but I hope these tips help you, and uh, good luck fishing. In my world, it's got a growl. In my world, it's got a purr. It's about raw horsepower. It's about refined horsepower. It's about sipping the gas and catching more bass. Give me the two-stroke direct injector Pro XS. I'll take the supercharged Pro four-stroke. Either way, you can't go wrong. So tell me, what kind of pro are you? Go to mercurymarine.com and take the online quiz to find the right pro for you.